Hello there, and welcome to the QNB Stars League Review Show, all in English here on Alcast as we look back at all six matches in Week 11. It was a little bumpy at the top of the league this last week, with Al Sad making big ground on their title challenge. The teams struggling down at the bottom all picked up points as well. The top th the bottom three, neither of them losing their matches. As always, I'm joined by former English Premier League players Nick Summerby and Chris Megan, who will share with us their expert opinion and also analyse each one of the matches in more depth. Plenty to come from them throughout the show, but first let's remind you how they lined up for Week 11. Spread over two days on Thursday, the 7th of December. Al Salih Al Dehel was the early kickoff. Al Ahli Al Rayyan kicked off at 18:10, the same time as Al Khalatiat faced Al Sadd. Then on Friday, the 8th of December, Al Arabi versus Al Khor was the early kickoff. Al Marhir took on Um Salal at 18:10, the same time as Kara Sports Club met Al Garafa. Right, let's get straight to the action. And Al Salia had lost their last two games. They really needed to stop the rot in order to consolidate their position in the top four. Al Duhel was the challenge in week 11. Commentary comes from Nick Sabi and Chris Makin. The thing is with Duhel is once they do get behind you, that's when it's problems and it all opens up and they're all the time trying to thread that ball. No swinging corner, free header for Mendes. Kuna put a far pulse and now then Namte Heat down the line towards El Arabi. El Arabi pulls off. That could be a ball penalty. Into Masatni. Referee denies Alda Hill the penalty. He doesn't get a touch on it though, does he? Masatni, that's the thing. If he has control of the ball, then maybe it's a penalty. So he doesn't get a touch on it, so he, he's no, not for me, not for me at all. 51% to El Salia, but here come De Hale. The Satne with the first touch turns Gregori again into the far post. Ball coming in now from Namte. Wonderful delivery as he's nowhere near it. Shot comes in from Musa. Corner to De Hale again. Good pressure. There's Musa, well defended, it bounced in the box then, but now it's another corner coming in from Namte, here we go, well defended again. Bell Hadge trying to clear it, he's playing around with it in the box, don't Ooh. dive, he's gone down. Gets two sides Well on. done, referee, yeah. well done, that's what, that's what we like. Yeah. Now then, Ishmael, Ishmael taking the shots on far post! There's no chance, but it does go past the far post. Another chance goes to Alder Hill, it's just a turn. Turning ball in behind Al Ali. Also, they're trying to play out from the back there, they're closed down by Alder Hill. Oh, and as he had the bang, oh, it's a handball. Khalifa comes out of his goal, it's a handball. What's the referee going to do? Last man record. It's the prod back from Louise who puts. His defence out of the game. Khalif is forced to come out. There's Lazar showing his pace again. Tries to prod it home. It's definitely a handball by Khalifa. He's the, the last man for De Hale. And it's a red card. Can't put this young keeper under pressure now. Straight away now. Straight away. You've got to, you've got to make him work. As soon as that kick goes over you, that turn. Rushing on him. Wagner steps up. Wagner just off the bar. Going in at half time. Here's the ball coming in. Oh, he just gets underneath it again. It's Musa again, Nick. Can a copy of the chance before that fell to Musa. Good pressure now from Alder Hill. They have a 3 v 2. Ishmael. Oh, That's he's got Masatni. He's got El Arabi to his right. Masatni to his left takes his shots on himself and he scuffs the best chance of the half. Do you know what, Chris? We could be talking about this at the end of the game. You know, they're waiting for that opportunity. Majdi gets caught out in possession by Ishmael. Well done by Ishmael. You've got to make it count. You've got to finish him off. Rabi now. Trying to slide in Ishmael down this round side. Oh, Masani gets ahead of Aziz. The referee's going to it's punch to the spot. Here we go. There's the pass by Al Ali. Same from Grigori. Aziz comes out. It's not. It's not, is it? Look, tackles him, look. buddy. It's OK. Yep, yeah, it's a tackle. 
it's a tackle, yeah, it really is there. And now El Arabi has a chance to fire them ahead, and now the Hale go 1 0 up. Down to 10 men, it doesn't matter. 1 0 to the Hale. You know, he really goes wide on it, but keeper not a chance at all. And they're back in the driving seat now, De Hale. Now, Madada on the counter attack for Salia. Wonderful ball through to Wagner. 1 1. And Salia back in his game. Wagner gets his end for the season. What a break from Ancelia. And what a ball by Madava. Absolutely fantastic. What a ball from Madava. Great pressure from Salia in midfield there. That's where it all started, Nick. Yeah, top quality. Get at that. Get at the back four. Exactly. Back to El Arabi. El Arabi wide to Ishmael. Ishmael to Musa. Musa pulling it back to El Arabi. Another chance goes. I guess a better of Hisham. Lazar still going for Madava in the box. Lazar, can he get his head up? Goes to the impulse. What a ball! Majdi into the feet of Lazar. Majdi goes to the 1 2, receives the ball. Majdi looking forward. Madava on the edge of the box. Back to Wagner. He's got to take the shots on, doesn't take it on. Enables the red shirts to get back. He's got to take it straight away, Wagner. When it comes to you, the chance is Lazar. You've got to take it. Now on the counter attack, here's Masatney driving forward, cuts inside of BD. Still Masatney, reverse pass to El Arabi. El Arabi, El Arabi, forward to 10 Nanti. Offside. If you look at it now, the pass. Hold on. Yes, he is offside then when it comes to Al Ali. It's a risky move by the defence of Salih, but they work it well, it's got to be said. Yep. Rabi, Ishmael now, back to El Arabi. He's trapped by Mustafa. Namte he El Arabi oh first one is just too heavy. This is a huge three points whoever gets it. There's a run, one of here the run, he's got on the opposite side of him here. Oh, what a wonderful it. tackle. He's not over oh, yet. Here no, we go. He's got it out to Namte he. Oh just that little bit of quality. That's missing from both sides tonight in the final third. Come we go. It's, it's, more. it's tight in there, it's got to go wide. On the, back, on the back, on the back. A BD, he's got to be clipped up. Doesn't take the cross on again. This time towards Madaba Al-Ali. <gasps> Full back, scored twice already this season, came in. He watches it all the way. Oh, it's got to go down as a chance for Al-Ali. Oh, Al Salia certainly managed to stop the rot against high flying Al Duhail, who only dropped points for the second time this season. That's their second draw, one with Al Garafa a few weeks back. Chris Makin. Yeah. Well, Al Duhail had to play uh, 60 minutes with 10 men. So we've <laughs> we were looking at it in commentary, we were fully expecting Al Salia with their attacking um, men on the pitch to really get at the hill, because they haven't been the best uh, at the back this season, have they, Al Duhail? And we thought at the end of the game, was it a, a, a missed chance there for Al Salia? If they would have got the three points, shown a little bit more belief in that game, that would have been a massive win for Al Salia. But credit to Alder Hale, even though they're down to ten men, they're so dangerous, aren't they? Yeah. You know, Nancy, he's still on the pitch along with Masatni. El Arabi always got a chance of scoring goals, and that's how it proved. But yeah. I just thought with a little bit more belief, it was there for Al Salia. OK, a bit more belief, but yeah. still, Nick, you saw something a bit different in Al Salia, something you maybe didn't feel lurked beneath. Well, we just thought, could, could they grind? Have they got, could they, when you play against the top side, you, you've got to be organised, you've got to be solid, and they showed us that, you know, they, they've got that um Salal side with them. Uh, and, and they made it difficult, and I think a few sides are going to start looking at uh, how to play against Dahl and make it difficult, you know, because they don't... Uh, you've got to look at Nam he, he didn't really get in the ball a lot, and certainly really didn't get on the ball like we used to see, so now these, these sides are finding a way of not giving him the space, because they like to thread the ball through the middle, you know, and they're making it, putting bodies in there, you see. And then I think you can catch them with the, with the wing-backs, can't you? Oh, you know, definitely, they're pushing yeah. forward, that's yeah. a little... The beauty of football is people get onto it, you know, they get onto what you do, and you think, well, hang on a minute, maybe we can have a chance when, the, when they're pushing forward, getting around the back, but keeping it solid in the middle. Right, Nick, kick us off on uh, Masakni's header. That's what we're looking at first. Just a little bit of that fine-tuning, what I always talk about. You know, this was uh, right off the training ground. Uh, there's a flick on. I don't think... I think when you look at this, this is, this is their chance. 
you know, and especially it falling to uh, to Masakne, he's got to put it away, has to put it away. And for some reason on the night, it just wasn't there. It was like a Grafford performance. I didn't think we'd see it again, but you would have thought when they took the goal, they'd have finished the game off, and they just didn't do it. That was a glorious chance. Now, very rarely do we get through a, a whole show without discussing uh, the referee. And uh, Damir Escomina was the referee in this particular game of Slovenia. Very, very experienced referee indeed. Uh, last big game I can remember is uh, the uh, Europa League final between Manchester United and Ajax this year. Mm. But and this one in particular was a decision you were happy with, both of you. Well, Nick was, yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, you're not happy I, about I, it? I can't remember it. I'll have to... I think he goes to ground. I mean, it's Mustafa who goes to ground. He's taken a chance by going to ground in the first place, but he does win the ball cleanly there against Masatney. We were pleased with the referee's performance on the night. He got most of the big calls right, didn't mm. he? That was, that was, it was a difficult one. You know, Early in the game yeah. as well. But the thing what did it is Masatney just lifted up. So when he went through the back of him, which was a big gamble, he, he, he got the ball cleanly, so... It was, we thought, and we, I think words from you, didn't they, at half-time, said he's, he can't give a civil penalty away. For some reason, another one came around, which we're going to see shortly. Mm. And it, the, the, the game is that quick now. It's very difficult, you know. It's very tough. They've got to get that decision straight away. Then we're lucky enough, we get to see it. Yeah. We get to see it on a replay. You know, you need to be a referee. You'd be like, what? what, what <laughs> just don't give anything. That's all I mean. We've we decided don't give a thing. It's difficult, but he got that one right there, and that could yeah. have very easily gone. Could have been a penalty. Right, El Arabi's first touch... Very rarely do we question his first touch, Nick. Once again, you know, just that little bit of quality. I mean, just watch it at the edge of the box. When he does get the space, usually, usually this guy, is, it's all about his first touch. But his first touch goes into where the three defenders are. You'll see it now as we zoom in our little 3D machine we've got here. And all of a sudden, that's where he took the ball. As soon as he did that, his opportunity went. And that summed up their performance, really, because usually it's in the back of the net. Mm -hmm. Usually it's a bit sharper. And it's it just out of his feet, boom, and it's game over, basically. But it just wasn't happening for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, and we'll move on to the next one. El Arabi and Nam mm. uh Chris, again, we see them so often yeah. just completely getting it bang on right and ripping teams apart on this occasion. No. They link up ever so well, don't they? You can throw Misatni into the mix as well. That's the forward line of Alder Hale. That's why they scored so many goals. Um, let's have a look at this little bit of action here. Great running off the ball. The movement off the ball is what causes all the problems for the oppositions. There we go, Namte. Very similar there. Uh, you know what? I'm going to put it down to uh, good defending that. Mm. So the hunger of Al Salia, the players getting back on both Namte here and El Arabi there, which you don't normally see, by the way, do you? No, not at all. They're getting back in numbers. Saying Alder Hale to just drop points, that's for the second time this season. The other one yeah. was, a, was a draw against Al Garafa. W would you say you could draw similarities? I know they were down to ten men, so, so we take that into consideration, but that aside, were there similarities in the performance against Al Salia in Week 11 with that draw they had with Al Garafa? Were there similarities yes. in the way Alder Hale approached it? Yeah, because he didn't finish him off. That's what we were used to seeing, which is impossibility, really, to do it all the time. But you just expect them, with those couple of chances, what we've just seen seen there, to finish the game off. The Masakni one, definitely. El Arabi, think they'll get the ball out of his feet and put it away. And it's just that little bit of... Not in the when comfort... Ishmael went through. Yeah, Ishmael, yeah, Ishmael <coughs> again, you just think, you know, it's just... Listen, they're sitting two, two points pretty at the top of the league, so yeah. who are we to grumble with, with that? We're just trying to say... Our big thing, what we're looking at, is when they go into the Champions League. You know, you can't be in the comfort thing here. You've got to step it up again. So we want them to it's carry the on finishing. Level. It's Everything the next has level. It's the next level, yeah. Be, yeah. But yeah. who are we to complain? Well, two we're, points. We're halfway three. through the season. Um, yeah. uh, before the start of the season, would El Salia take this position that they're in now? <sighs> yes. So job done for, uh, for them, yeah. for me. Alder Hale, would they take uh, being top going into the break? Yeah, so the two sides are done. Really well in the first half of the season. Uh, right, not just on Alder Hale's side, but also for Al Salia. They missed a few opportunities as well. This yeah. one from Ali. Yes, it was a difficult one, but we've seen yeah. him score some great goals this only, season. Only because we've seen him. He's yeah. got a fine strike of the, of the ball. He, he likes to come forward. He's already scored twice this season. And I just feel, you know, anywhere on the target, keep it uh, low, and that's a goal. But I love Al Ali because he gives you that option. Um, remember Patrice Everett from Manchester United, very similar in style, loves to get forward. He gives you that balance on the left hand side. And um, after seeing his uh, two, go two goals early in the season, I thought he was going to hit the target then. Right, another penalty to discuss. Masakni being brought down. Go on then, Nick. 
<laughs> what did you make yeah, of this? This will give you an idea now. I mean, it's wonderful play by him. You know, this is what the referee's got to see. You know, he gets there, but, you know, obviously we've had the chance to, to see it. It's not at all because the keeper wins the ball. And where the, where the keeper wins the ball, it goes in the direction like he has, he has won it. Look, I mean, he gets a touch, but the keeper does as well, and it's not a foul. See there, look. I mean, it's all about the connection there. If he comes out and he doesn't get the ball and gets a man, without a shadow of a doubt, it's a, it's, a, it's a penalty, but he's come out and won the ball. But difficult, difficult one to call, really. It's, it's our one. But you, you have, you've got to look where the ball went. You know, and the keeper's gone like that, and it's gone that way. If masatney has got it, it goes that way. So, you know, anyway. All right. Uh, other players uh, who uh, stood out uh, for Al Salia Mudava, Chris. Superb on the night. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely superb on the night. He was up against Musa down this left hand side, and every time he got the ball, um, he, he seemed to beat the Alder Hale defender. And he gives you that strength, he gives you that pace, he's very direct. Um, we thought he was extremely, um, he, was, he was fantastic on the night. Here we go again. Every time he gets the ball, Musa. <laughs> he was enjoying Musa it. Musa must he? be thinking, oh no, Musa not, wasn't not him yeah. again. <laughs> Superb player, done really well. Yeah. I think the last two or three seasons he's done well for Al Salih. He's mm. come in with his uh, fair share of goals as well. Look at the pace there. I mean, Musa doesn't really get beat for pace normally. No. Madava certainly had the beat of him in that second period. So, Sammy Trebelsi, on the whole, will be delighted with that point, despite them having a man advantage for and an I hour. Think, and I think they probably needed a break now. I know it's, they haven't played a lot of games, but brilliant what they've done. Uh, they, they, they were left scratching their head in the games before it, but all of a sudden now they've, you know, they can get back together and give it a real good go next season. They've done really well. Wagner, wow, he's been wonderful. And just at the end, then you get to see Mudava. So it's, uh, yeah, it's good. Right, on we move. Al Ahli. They picked up a very important win in week 10, which moved them into the top half of the table into six. Could they build on that in week 11 against high flying Al Ryan? <laughs> And Ryan may have bossed this game from the off, but it was to be one of those nights where they couldn't finish the job. And he kept plugging away, and in the 19th minute, Montari found himself in some space and finished the move off nicely. His second goal in as many games for Al If that stunned Al Ryan, then they were even more shocked when Kaderi turned up on the edge of the box and fired the ball into the top corner. In the second half, Al Ryan threw everything at Al Ali, but Joaquin Caparos' men held firm and kept their third clean sheet of the season. Well, we often say we didn't see that coming, and I think Nick and Chris will both admit they didn't see that one. Yeah, massive result. I mean, they, they were watching the De Hale game before it, mm. and they must have thought, well, hang on a minute, we've got a glorious chance here. You know, we've been, we've been a bit critical with Al Ali, but they've, they've definitely turned the corner. 14 points now, you know, they've, they've got themselves going. You've got to say as well, Montari coming in. Yeah. It's a big result, and here he is, Montari. We were worried about him in the, in the last game when he went off with an injury, but the guy's, uh, you know, he's, he's a massive plus for the side. Mm. And, they, and they're going well, you know, they, they really are. They've turned it around, and this is a huge result. Didn't see this coming at all. You know, they've stuck with. Kaparos has, has remained there. Yeah. It, was, it was all a bit scrappy. I mean, this is a, a fabulous goal, but it's yeah. a, it has been a complete turnaround. Chris, yeah, I know you, were, you, weren't, you both you both, you weren't fans of Al Ahly at the beginning of the season. Well, they were struggling. It's, you know, it's new ideas from a new coach, and obviously it took a little bit of time uh, to bed in. But, you know, the introduction of Montari, it's no coincidence that they've started winning lately. Montari's scoring. Uh, Chikawi's got that gal, the creativity. Nazrik seems to be the battering ram. I watched the second half of this uh, game and Nazrik just takes all the attention off the other two because he just runs around the pitch, putting the opposition defence under so much pressure, shutting them down with his work rate. I've got to say, Arian absolutely battered them in the second half. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they had something to hold on to. They had the two-goal lead. It was a battering. Some of the chances... And full marks to the goalkeeper, Al Sheikh. Absolutely superb. He, he pulled off four you know, world-class... Uh, saves. He kept the, the, the clean sheet, kept them in the game. But Al Ryan must be scratching heads thinking, how we didn't score, we'll never know. But those sort of things happen sometimes. Those games, yeah. you know, as you often say, you can't really put your finger on it. You've done everything right apart from put the ball in the back of the net. And yeah. that's what they failed to do, despite their fantastic lineup, their fantastic players who can all score. Yeah, well, sometimes you've got to dig in and sometimes you've got to, you know, you have to ride a little bit a lot. Mm. But just saying that, I think Chikawi, him back to his fitness, you know, he brings something special. 
and how he's the way he covers the ground, the, the way he scores goals, the way he sets opportunities mm. up. They've got they've got it going now, and they've got the belief. You know, what he looked, he, he was watching Chikawa, and he, like you say, he just glides, doesn't he? Yeah. He's, he's a tall man, but I'll tell you what, he loves getting in tight positions, and I love players like that. Yeah. And you need it against the big sides like that, where you're under pressure. He'll get it anywhere on the pitch, willing to receive the ball off, off any of his teammates, anywhere in the pitch. You need that. And I know you said that you know Al Ryan threw everything at it and had so many chances, and didn't score. But and you can say, well, that's just bad luck. But somebody like Michael Loudrup would not be too happy about that you know a week ago he was very happy looking back at the season the way it had gone you know it's just it's it's a it leaves a bad taste doesn't it just going into the break when you've it does yeah that's happened to you. it does yeah but you know i look at it when fasati was there fasati drove them he drove them he pushed them forward look at belmardi he pushed them forward you're gonna win the league that's what he says to the players and when we're asking questions to to mr loudrop you know well, we're happy just to have the gap there well, it's going to be a certain time when the pressure is going to be on where, where you have to win things. Cup games are going to come up where they're expected to win. You know, they've got to be. So, for me, maybe, the, maybe the title the contenders, face. and they've got a drink, they've got yeah. they've got a, they've got to stamp their authority on this here now because they're good enough. Doing that at the press conferences and being a bit cute. Yeah, you know, oh yeah, he's yeah, done it with McQuay before. Of course, yeah, but there, it's going, there's going to be a pressure point in there. There's going to be when there's big cup games come up. It's going to be when they when they meet the the, the top two, and they've got to they have to win. The, the, you know? the first goal that. Um, Sorry, the second goal, they can't really do anything about it. Kader, no. you, you say all Tremendous. that, you can shoot from there, it comes in off the bar, it, you know, bounce over the line. The first one, they could do better. But apart from that, they can't do any more than... The, the chances that they created <laughs> were, you know, guilt said chances. And they hit the target with them as well. And any other night, they win that game, well, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it was just Al Sheikh was in fantastic form. Well, here are then. They got beat by Al Saad without Hamadala. He plays in the yeah. game. He doesn't play in the game. There are these not as strong without him. You know, did don't... he come on against sub? Pardon? Uh, no, he beat. came on against it when he when they beat Al Sad. Yeah. When they had to come on then, didn't they? Sorry, they, when they got beat, oh, the they got beat by uh, De Hale, didn't came they? On, didn't and then he came on against. They, they did the same thing. They they it just, it just they gave left, a spark. He yes, just, does, they're yeah. a different yeah. outfit when the pair of them are up there. When you Sebastian know? and Hamadala are up there, they're a different. Yeah. It always filters it, down through everybody else. Everybody's yeah. happy. Yeah. Even though he's a goal scorer, he reminds me of Chikawi. They've got that the the ability to just open up a defence just by running at a defender. Yeah. They both have it, don't they? Yep. All right. Now then, Al Khratiat, they'd only managed four points in their last four games, and as a result, they'd been pulled down into the scrap down at the bottom of the table. Could they catch Al Sad out, who themselves weren't firing on all cylinders? Head coach Oswaldo Ferreira had said publicly that he felt his team were performing at only 50%. It was exactly what the team needed to hear because in this game, they were on fire. In the 40th minute, Xavi delivered the perfect free kick there for returning Pedro to glance at the back of the net. Early in the second half, Al Sadd won a penalty and Al Haidus stepped up to slot it away. Al Sadd was certainly back in the groove and in the 70th minute, a free-flowing move was brilliantly finished by Hamroon and <coughs> Al Haidus crowned a top-class performance with a beautiful goal. Four minutes later. Ah, mind games and psychology. Is that what it is from Josualdo Ferreira? Well, we'll have to ask Mr Balmardi what percentage he feels he feels his team's played at. Because if they played at 50%, if they raise it another 20%, then they should win the league in the second half of the season then. Well, that's what he's asking for. That's what he said in his press conference. Yeah. Uh, you know, well, but, but to say you publicly, at, right, how, how, would you, if, how would you feel as a player? You know, you, you both played at the top level. If your coach came out in a press conference and said, "You thought, okay, we're giving it. Okay, we're not quite. You, you know, you're not feeling. You're not playing absolutely at the top." Yeah. But he says we're playing at fifty percent. You probably think, "Hang on a minute, no, we're no, not." I take it as a, as a positive. I think. Yeah. Well, let's step it up in the second half of the yeah. season. We'll blow everyone away here. You got to get uh, Bunja back. You know, Pedro's hardly played this season. Uh, Ibrahim's been out. You know, three crucial players there. They get them back in. The, when they've got their full 11 out, the very, very competitive side, Al Sad, and they'll, they'll run Alder Hill close in the second half of the season. This is, all a, this is a great opportunity. You look at Al Sad now, would you say they've achieved what they would, would have wanted to before the start of the season? What, to be they, second they now? They've to the break. Yeah. Two points behind Alder Hill. They've scored four in this, in this match. And that's without the the the, uh, the full amount of players. Mm. They could yeah, just they I'm, could just hit it. And it, yeah. you said as well, 
they might even be doing business as well. If they yeah. do some oh, business, he, want, he said he got wants to, to do that. If they yeah. do that, we might be stood here going, hang on a minute. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they, all their key players now, we're looking at Hamroon. You know, he's he, he's hitting his form. Al Look at this goal. <laughs> but this is the Al Sad, isn't it? Correct. That we love. You know, they, the, Xavi starts a move back this in his is own the Al penalty we saw area. In the Emir Cup final and, and the yeah. Cup games at the end of the last season, this is what I relate to when I'm, when I'm talking about Al Sad. Um, I think it's, absolutely, it's critical because they are going in the Champions League as well. If they had one or two or maybe even three players to their squad, they could be in business. Really mm. could. And the good thing is, the main thing is that they've not hit nowhere near their form. Mm. So they've got to do it. You know, all of a sudden now, yeah. De Hale, they've got to try and keep that going all the way. It's very difficult to do it all the way along. Yeah. On word on Al Khalatiat, probably a good time for them to have a break, just to sort well, of reassess what's going on, because they are in that scrap now yeah, in they, the bottom. And the, and the coach and manager alluded to it in the press conference about their defence. They've created, uh, sorry, uh, they conceded 26 goals, which is the most in the league. It's uh, troubled times at Al Khalatiat. They've just been brought right back into it, haven't they? The only mm. thing, the only thing with them, it's like our old club, Sunderland. I mean, for many years they managed to stay in the Premier League. Obviously, then they got relegated. I think they've got two. I think they've got quality. They showed they show me something under last season. It's pretty much the same squad except for Maui was coming. They they've got they've got if they get it right somehow or other they can get out of it because they'll because they'll score goals typically in turn or considering that amount of goals. Yeah, they've got it. Well, all you've got to do is they've got to just sort that out, haven't yeah. they? Simple as that. They work on that, which I think the back to basics. Let's get defence well, right every day, twice a day. Like that, right, everyone here's the defenders. Get time, <laughs> everybody shape, shape every day, yeah, all the way through till we start. Yeah, <laughs> but that's what you, you've done it. Yeah, you've, you've yeah. been through plenty of those with yes. your with your clubs you played for. Yeah. Listen, that, that's Boring. all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that's you, done, yeah. yeah, but that's all Sam Allardyce who's gone to Everton yeah. does. He goes into a football club, it's not rocket science, and he go, right, straight away we sort the we sort the defence out, and then after that we can work on going forward. And that's all yeah. it needs. Get that sorted out, you're gonna score goals. Mm. Right. It was now or never for Al Arabi. With just one win all season, they were rock bottom. A win against Al Khor in week 11 could turn out to be a pivotal moment in the season. The commentary once again comes from Nick Summerby and Chris Nakin. Al Arabi, just no one up front, no one occupying the back four of Al Khor. Real worry on the and they're going to get a goal from this game. There's a late challenge, and it's a red card for Sarouche in the third minute. Goes over the top on. He's showing two feet. Jamal. I think they're both doing it. Look, I mean, he's off the floor. This is the tackle what people don't want to see, but he stays on the pitch. No free kick now. Too far out from a shot, I think, there, Chris. So, has he got the win? Have they got the win behind? No, it goes for the cross on him. Goes for the far post. Interesting ball. Oh, and the second ball was. There for someone to pounce on. Castan was the nearest man to it. Here we go. Alberiki stretching for the ball. Take it back to basics for me, Chris. Once it goes out in, I'll go and get into the box. Can you get your foot around it? Whip it in. Just put a few crosses in and try and create some chances. Here he's got the, got the space now. But nobody in the box at all. Space now for Yassin. Yassin to the far post. What a good ball. Head out of the near post. There's your chance, Chris. There, look at look. Nobody's near him. He Man just Sonic. manages. He manages to just pick his cross out. Wonderful delivery. He's got to do better. He just doesn't get it right at all. It's a glorious opportunity for Al Arabi. Didn't live up to those standards, and so far I've had one decent cross in this match. It came from Yassin. It was probably the first real chance or half chance of the match when Yassin crossed for Mansour. But it could be a break on now for Madsen. Madsen breaking forward. Oh, he's pulled back. He's not the last man, though. No. Jassir on Madsen, it's on the edge of the box. Yellow card goes to the midfielder. He's lucky as well, wonderful yeah. play from Madsen, he just showed us that pace. It, it just gave him a glimmer, he got in front of the defender, pushed it forward. May have been lucky not to get a red card, Chris, I think, here. If you, if you threw one on one, just look at this here now. There's the pace from Madsen, pushing forward, trying to break into the box, gets, bro gets brought down. Yeah, Jassir just pulls back Madsen, but he's got Natik in cover there. That's why he didn't get the red card. So Madsen looking at far post. With his left foot now, but the keeper's there. For me, he's probably going to try and just take it around the side of the wall. That's where the gap is. Mahan had in goal for Al Arabi. Nervy times for the goalkeeper. He 
You can't see it though, the keeper. I'm sure he can't. Here it is, Madsen. Good save by Mahane. There's a rebound there. The header comes in from Alcora again. It's put out for a corner. Whips at a far post. Mahane punches clear. He's safe at the far post. He's very much like a Tabata goal. You know, he just. Uh, where you think he's going to put it, he puts where, where the goalkeeper stood. Didn't move, Gets did it right, Mahane. but the keeper didn't move and managed just to palm it away. Corner to Alcor, though. There's a movement from Castan and Albariki. Mardi up there as well. Oh, Castan in a post! See, to time it right. I think he just turns his head too quick. Let's have a look. Oh, just heads it past the near post, Nick. All, oh, he, all he's got another. to do, all he's got to do, is just hit the target. You know, even if you just flick it on, he just got to hit the target. The keeper was nowhere to be seen. The, the quality of the cross was good. He gets his head on it. Should have scored. Oh, flicks on the near post. Just kept out by Castan for Alcourt. Well done. That's better. All of a sudden, a wonderful delivery into the box. Lovely flick on, but nobody gets on the end of it. This is the ball into the box. There's the flick on. Right off the training ground, that. Just needed a red shirt just to get across the oh, middle of the goal. Got a chance. Yasin at the near post flicks on. Nati coming into the far post. Great clearance from Castan, though. It's in by Cal Fan. Oh, free header at the far post. Yasin! 1 0. There's a breakthrough for the home side. Yasin at the far post. Good header. Yeah, well done. You've got to say as well, Yasser has been probably one of the one of the good players for Al Arabi. Free header, and he takes his opportunity. Now, they've been knocking on the door. It's come in. They started doing better, Al Arabi, and now they've got that one goal lead. There's the ball into the box. There's the header. Bit of luck with it. Gets a deflection. Just he... loses Hamad Nick on the way through there with the run. Free header. I think it's an old goal. It comes off Redder in the end. There's a the header from Yasser. Let's have a look. Yeah, it definitely comes off Redder. Into the cup, top corner, no chance for Leconte, but it doesn't matter. Al Arabi will take that. Switch a play from Arabi. Wonderful first touch, great. Close control by Khalfan. Trying to play the one two. With Mansour, there's a shot coming in. Good save by Leconte. Better from Khalfan. That's what we expect from him. Turn, it's a great ball <laughs> through to Fathy. I don't know if he meant it, but That's Diego Jardel goes down under pressure. It's time for him, Redder. I think that I think that was Chris. I, mean, I think he had the he had the touch, and then he goes down. Let's have a look at it now. It's a lovely bit of play from Al Arabi. This is the pass here now, but just watch. There's the first touch. It's about we'll see it more now. There's his touch. He just catches the back of his leg there. No, not for me. Mate. It's, he's only limited to his ball, you know, the ball into his feet. It's better from Hamad, though. Then he runs into Fafi. Neither side, and then Kafa steps on the ball. Neither side. Of... Oh, this one. Yellow card goes to Maddie. It's a red card. It's his second yellow as Kafa rolls over for the tenth time. So, is he. Another red card now for Alcorn. Surely that's the end of their evening. Probably says everything about Owen Hillal with a wonderful chance. Why did he take on first time? And incredibly, the nine men of Alcorn nearly score. Great chance that time. Pulled back to Saif. Hilal didn't take the shot on first time. It's just a warning sign there for Al Arabi. They're only one nil up, Nick. And Alcorn just keeping the ball, then went forward at will. Now come. Al Arabi down the other side, down the other end. Sorry, poor play by Al Arabi. That you, that won't bother Bonasic. He's urging his players forward. Then he's Ramadan, the fullback coming back. Sorry, come forward from the left back area. And he it's the first sign, real, real aggressive run. And he's won his side a, a, a penalty. I think it is a penalty, good good positive play, that's what we've been looking, that's what we've been crying out for. Gets into the box, gets on the opposite side of the defender. The defender, here we are, just having a look at it. This is better play. Picks it up just over the halfway line, drives into the box. It's 
We'll have Alberique. to look at it. Yeah. Alberique, he's not, he, he's not buttoned down with his feet. It's more like with his shoulder, gets on the outside. The referee doesn't hesitate at all, straight away points to the spot. This is the chance now for Al Arabi really just to put this game to bed. He's on, he was already screaming before he touched him. <laughs> you notice that then? He started shouting before he touched him, didn't it? Like a finger on him. There was only one thing he was going to do. Yeah. You know, as soon as he got past him, as soon as that slightest of contact, he was going down. <laughs> Here's Calfan to make it 2 0 to Al Arabi. Calfan down the middle. It's enough to beat Leconte, and it's 2 0 to Al Arabi now. This will be game over, three points to Al Arabi. And what a very important win this will be. Oh, Kalfa just lays off. Kalfa comes in, 3 0. That does wrap up the three points for Al Arabi tonight. Kalfa with his second of the night. Wonderful touch there by Hamad Khalfan. There's a toe poke from the famous number 10. She's so much at Al Sad playing his trade now at Al Arabi. This is second of the evening there. So poke enough to beat Lecomte down the middle. 3 0 to Al Arabi. That's the three points for the Dream Team as they move up into ninth place. What a victory for Al Arabi. It might have come against nine men, but it just had to happen, Chris Macon. We'll take that all day long, won't we? Yeah. <laughs> Rock bottom of the, the league before this uh, match, and they just needed a break, or uh, Coach Bonasic needed something to hang on to, or give him hope, or give the players hope. And they got it, didn't they? Two red cards, uh, fortunate in, in the match, so they'll take it heading into the break with a win. It just looks better as well. He climbs to ninth place. Fantastic for the players now. Does it? Did you feel there was a little bit more on offer in that performance? I know it was against nine men, you know, for, for a lot of it. But was there an improvement? Yeah, I think that you can see that what he's done on the training ground. You know, he's. Uh, you can see they're a little bit more organised. Uh, you got to say as well then with Calfan. You know, sometimes you say, well, is he the person to drive them? What he does, he, he, you know, he produces. He needs a lot more help around him. But the main thing is there is the club needed it. You know, no matter where you are in the world of football, you can see the crowd at the end and they're happy, you know, and the manager needed it. If they'd have gone into the break without a win, it, it'd have been an awful place. Now they've got something to get hold of. Can he do a bit of business again and bring some players in? Can he can he go to the way he wants it to be? And I think he's up for the challenge. I think he really I think he to see him change within a week, he's up for it. And I think he's that type of person who likes the challenge. You know, he knows that everyone's against him. He's thinking, well, I'll have a bit of this then, no problem. He's going to get him fit, first and foremost. You know, and he hopefully does a bit of business. Luca Bonasic certainly is a character. Uh, one uh, decision that, they, well, the whole game sort of changed around this, and it was early doors, and it was, it was that red card for Sarouche, who'd been a huge influence for Al Khor in the last three matches, three goals in three games, and then yeah. sent off in the third minute. Massive blow, because he's come in and he's helped. Madsen, you know, is a lot... Demanded off Madsen and that football club, and Sarusha seemed to take the headlines away from the Brazilian lately. And this was just a massive call. Two in the, was it just over two minutes there. I mean, Jamal, skipper for Al Arabi, he gets off his feet as well. I think he yellow card for each player for me. Yeah. Is that what you would have done the same well, After uh, two and a half minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's, it's what game's got, over, isn't it? Yeah, what you this got, one, yeah, when this I see it. players like that rolling about, I play on. Because yeah. you're not injured. I can't find it's better than that. Yeah, you You're not in your, we will see it so many times. When 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 this happens, body it's called body language, Rod. When play when you're I mean, injured, he touched him on the back. We, there. we saw last week perfect example of someone's when they're really injured. It was advice. And when you when you when you get a bad knock or on your your body, you're motionless because you're going to shock because the pain's that bad. So when I see players like this rolling about, let's play on. Because they're not really injured. All this what this get on, you know when the physio on and they're rolling about. Oh, you see him it'll be on 30 seconds later running about the pitch. <laughs> but the thing is with him there is he falls over 
Yeah. So you're trying to get the ball as he's moving. So you're obviously going to connect him. You're trying to jab the ball, get the ball away from his body. But it's a, the slightest it's not, of yeah. touches. It's, no, no, it's not. It's, it's not uh, another thing we've got to try and stamp out. We're trying, but it's a big challenge. But, you know, so this, <laughs> in, in, the, in the end, it helped Al Arabi and they were down, you know, Al Khul were down to nine men and yeah. they we're took just, control. We're happy with the manager, that's why, because he's... He, He's always approachable, it's been difficult for him, and it's given him something there now, and it's given the place a bit of a lift, so we're happy for him there. Right, Mansour's header, Nick. Yes, wonderful. Let's have a look when it comes on. Right, here we go now, we're ready. They had a lot of space time on this right-hand side. This is what we thought they'd probably utilise a little bit more second half. I mean, when you get the space like that, go into the space, but let's have some quality as well. There's Mansour in the background. That's the run what he's looking for. Inch perfect, and it's a chance for them. You know, this is where they've got to be on the training ground and, and working, working on it. Great delivery. It's an opportunity for you. When you're down at the down at the bottom of the league, there you've got to take those opportunities, or at least hit the target, make the keeper work. And we'll finish off with a well-worked corner. Again, these were positives. We can they look were, at because you know, you know straight away that the club or the team have been playing. Sorry, uh, working with it on the training ground. There, we just need a few. These four red shirts in the box there. Just need two. Attack in the middle of the goal there, and it's a it's a tapping for someone, isn't it? Nick? It's well worked. It's yeah. you know it's something. This when you asked me, we asked me before, did you see anything? Well, obviously they've been doing this. They've been yeah. working on it, getting that flick on. Just got to take a bit of a gamble. A lot of the sides we've seen some, some wonderful crossing, uh, the first part of the season, you know. But just people it's in the certain areas. Once again, they just take a gamble, you know, and you get the you, you get the reward for it. Right, uh, Al Marchia. They were putting in some decent performances, but unfortunately not really picking up the points. Just two in their last four outings. They'd have to put in something special to get anything out of the game against fifth place Um Salal. This match was pretty even, although Al Marchia were the busiest in front of goal. As early as the 13th minute, they were ahead through Gary with his third goal of the season. Um, Salal got the equaliser just before the hour mark when the Mouse's corner found the head of Moroccan defender Riley, who was charging in. Both sides had chances late on. But it finished. 1 1. Right, 1 1. A good point for Almar here, Nick? Yeah, I've been dis I've been disappointed with them. I really have, uh, uh, just with the players what they got there. For me, I think it's not made, it's not done the effect what I thought it would do. I do keep saying, saying to myself, but they, are, they he has a really good squad there for a team mm. what's just come up, and it's not gelled. It's not happened for them yet. Is it a good point for them? Well, I'm expecting them to win. Some, some think, against, listen, against Um Salah, it probably is a good point. Mm. Uh, I think they take a win and a few more losses. Yeah, the, yeah you know, in, in terms of form, you look at the form the last five games. Drew, lost, Drew, lost, Drew. Mm. And they need a win and a couple of losses just to just get, to it, get going. it going a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. They've they? got some great the players there. Good, they? You've got some fantastic players there. You know, yeah. I mean, they're all of a sudden carry scores. You know, you've got Lawrence in midfield, Bilal there. Uh, yeah, you've got the youngsters there, Nasser and all that. I'll tell you something, some fantastic players there. He'd love to be working with them. He's been given what he wants. He talks about this is his side. Mm. Well, I just, Triori, I, 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 oh, yeah, Triori like what a wonderful player he is as well in midfield. Yeah. You know, we're just I'm waiting for him to go. Come on, let's give it. Hopefully, next next part of the season we see him go. But Um Salal will not make the mistakes the second part of the season and what, of what they did. Carry though, you're happy that he's, uh, you know, only three goals this season, but you wanted more from him. Maybe this is, maybe it's starting to happen for him. No, but he's he's a good pro. You know, he, he works hard, he works the line, he's strong. You know, and I, I, I like him. He'll work well with Abdul Kadir. This is not good marking. Got to say as well, he, this he's been a wonderful signing. Rayali hasn't he? Yeah. Uh, good centre half there. He's he, this is what he's capable of doing. You know, and I just. I don't, I don't see this. It's the business end of the season for Um, um Salal. They want that fourth spot. And as far as I'm concerned, I think they'll get the fourth spot. Because yeah. I think they've just got that... They're more dogged. They know how to grind results out. You know, and they, they're capable of upsetting the league again at the end. They're capable... For me, they'll probably beat De Gea when they play him this, is, is the next time. Only because of what happened in the in the first game, they got the, given the two decisions. They're capable to throw a spanner in the works with anybody at the end. I think they're dogged, but they, they just haven't excited me. This season, that's no, no win in the last five, three draws on the trot. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I've, I've said to it many a time, have they got the the firepower of Al Salia? I mean, they're better defensively. But they haven't done they? they haven't done well. But they're only three points behind. Uh, exactly. Them. That's well, the thing. Now. You know, if if I'm looking at 
the difference between Umsalan and Al Salia, Al Salia, you know, they can score two or three goals. But All concede right. as well. Yes. Yeah. Let's move on. Umsalan will get tighter, but they, they, on. they, they win one. Oi! This is it. <laughs> Be quiet. We right. Qatar <laughs> Sports. Um, they wanted to follow their massive performance in week 10, where they picked up only their second win of the season with another real good performance against Al Garafa. And as Sportscom continued where they left off in week 10, they were positive and direct. But an unlucky handball in the area. My Jamal allowed Luis Jimenez to score from the penalty spot and notch up his third goal of the season. Despite all of Cata Sports Club's efforts, they just couldn't get through until seven minutes from time when Habibu timed his run perfectly to get on the end of Al Rabi's cross. Turn Abdullah Mubarak's when men a well earned draw. Will that do? A draw following the win in week 10? Uh, yeah, I think they would have took before Mubarak went into the club. Next two games, what would you take, coach? Four points from six. I think he would have. Mm. Heading into the break, yeah. it was bottom of the league, wasn't it? It would uh, look terrible at one stage. So four points from six in the last two games, right before the break, yeah. Mm. And it went 1-0 down, by the way. I watched the second half, they really pushed out Garafa all the way back. Search. At one stage, I thought, they're not going to get this goal. It took until seven minutes from time to get it, but... And uh, this is the one that they went down to, which was a penalty again, a handball. They're always a bit of a nightmare, those. Well, now he gets out of the way of this. He arms are down by his side there. I mean, I mean, the, the, I mean the shot's going on target, though, isn't it, Nick? So it's, it's, it's difficult. It's, it's difficult. It, yeah, it's it's on, it is on target, and the yeah. hand gets in the way. If someone blasts a ball at you from a yard away, so you, it's very difficult to get out of the way. Because <laughs> after you're going, you need reaction to a wild ah, cougar. You're, 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 waiting, you're waiting for it to smash in your face, and you're going, ah, here we go. You don't think of your arms, do you? Uh, but what a goal that was from the they, they deserved it with the second half pressure. We were searching for it, we were pushing Al Garafa back. And that's why it's such a valuable point for Qatar Sports Club. Mm. What's, that, what's that one goal? That's the only problem. Abibu, Hopefully yeah. he can get him going. Yeah. It's only been one goal, you know, even the manager before, it's not really they're expecting more from him. Yeah. Let's let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at that handball again, because Nick's absolutely right. When somebody blasts a ball at you from a couple of yards, you just Oh, no chance. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you play for these things now. You know, really go, oh, hang on, I'm moving my hands around the back yeah. of everything. You don't know what you're, where it is. All you're thinking is... It's two smash yards away. He's probably a yard away, Nick, yeah. like you said. Look, look. Well, you're thinking, and he goes with his arms down by his side anyhow. All you're worried about, it doesn't hit you in two places, your face and, and your thing. You're not worried about your hands, are you? No. That's all you're thinking, are you? You can't, you just... But then he's, I can have a ball and blast it yeah. from here to you, Rodders, now, and you wouldn't know what the hell, what's going on, would <laughs> no, you? I know. Right. You, I know, you used to be in the Guinness Book of Records Leave for the hardest Leave shot in the world. Yes, Crazy. he did. Met, We're going back I a few I should love a record break. I must have missed that one. <laughs> I can't find it anywhere. I think I dreamt it. <laughs> no, it's true. Nick Summerby did once hold the world record for the hardest shot in football. Well, <laughs> Did you see how they measured it? <laughs> with a speed gun. <laughs> shoot <laughs> some MM, the old magazine, shoot a match. It was a few years back. Okay. Um, let's have a look at that uh, Habibu goal. Mm. Yeah, wonderful delivery. Yeah. You know, I think he could I think he's a handful if he get crosses into the box. You know, just watch how aggressive he is and he gets onto it. You know, and it's a good finish. Maybe that's maybe that's a strength what they should be looking for when they come back, getting quality into the box. The guy's a handful. He's like a real old school centre forward, you know. And he gets up there, and you know he probably needs probably needs a few crosses. So let's throw a few of them before him and see what he's all about. They were positive, you know. They played with Habibu and Fahad up front, so uh, Coach Mubarak was positive in this game. What two centre forwards? You can't. You're not allowed to do that anymore now. It's, it's, it's a forbidden <laughs> word to That's say. That. Really you, 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 you can't do that. You've been Just bending not... his ear at the press conferences, haven't you? No, you can't beat him. He's too. He's you no. Know, he's got the old. He can't get involved with him. He's cracking jokes with me and Chris. He loves it. Straight away, he's got that. He's got that thing. What goes into the dressing room? What goes into the club? You know, he's got an infectious, having a bit of a laugh type yeah, of thing. We'll, we'll see the result immediately on, yeah. on the pitch. It's fantastic. All right, uh, let's recap the results then from uh, week eleven. So Al Salia with that uh, wonderful draw against Al Duhail one one. Al Atli picking up a fantastic win against Al Rayyan, and Al Sad back into the groove with a four 0 win against Al Khairatia. Those were the matches on Thursday, the 7th 
of December. Then on the 8th, Al Arabi. Wow, just their second win of the season. 3 0 against Al Khor. Al Marjir won one draw with Um Salal. And then, as you saw, just we were talking about Qatar Sports Club and Al Garafa playing out a 1 1 draw as well. And uh, let's uh, jump straight to the QNB League standings. After 11 weeks, so we're at the halfway stage now. This is how it looks. Al Dehail lead the way, two points clear of Al Saad, who is second. Al Rayan in third, two points further back. Al Salia make up the top four. Um Salal are lurking there in fifth. And Al Ahli, who've made great progress. Their last uh, couple of games help keep them in sixth position there. Al Graf is seventh. They've improved a little bit there. Al Khor in eighth. Al Arabi, big movers from bottom of the table up to ninth. Al Khadatiat in tenth. Qatar Sports Club um, in eleventh. And it's Al Marjia who are propping up the rest now with seven. But again, it is so tight there. And let's just remember that, you know, for any of those sides from, well, from seven down in that bottom half, uh, a couple of wins and suddenly you're knocking on the door of the top half of the table, Nick. Yeah, which is good, you know, it's a competitive league, especially down there. I think you'd probably say from Um Salal, Um Salal, Salir, that's the, that's the battle there for the getting in the fourth spot. Al Ahli, on their form? Well, all of a sudden we've got their attention now. If they, start off, if they start off with a couple of victories, could it change? But I think it's really between Salir and Um Salal for fourth. OK, it's time for the top three goals of the week, as chosen by Nick Summerby and Chris Makin. And number three... I did it last week. You. Hamroon. <laughs> Nick, <laughs> come on. Roll, number three, who gets it? Let's have a look. Yeah, Hamroon. As we, as we said before, it's great to see him back to his best. Uh, I mean, we remember him, don't we, from the Amir Cup final, but it's all about the build-up, all about... Are we saying to her, are we seeing Al Sad back again, playing the football we saw last season? And this guy is, uh, you know, what a player he is and what a finish. Just smashes it into the roof of the net. Goal. And he'll be coming to Alcas International Tournament. And once yes. again, he doesn't know it yet, but he will do. The Alcas International Cup, not far away now. 21st of January till the 31st. Make sure you join us on Alcas for the best under-17 tournament in the world. Uh, at club level, that's for sure. Uh, Chris, number two. Uh, Carry. Ah. Yeah. OK. Well done, Carrie. Well done, Carrie. Third goal of the season. Need a lot more in the second part of the season. Wonderful touch, good movement, wonderful strike. Come on, Carrie, we need some more goals from you. Let's get a win for Mark here very soon. But the top goal at the halfway point in week 11 goes to who? Kadri. Ah, Ali. have I said that right? You Can't have. Yes, you what have. a strike. In fact, by the almost way. in a Qatari dialect. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what a strike, by the way. Absolutely wonderful. I mean, let's not, let's not forget who they're playing against. They're playing against Ryan. What a massive performance. And this what strike finish. What about this, the Maradona this is a turn? Fantastic little bit of a turn there. And then all of a sudden, there, he just finishes it off. What a fantastic strike. Big performance. Nicholas from Ali. said, was it in? The other night. I thought it was. I thought it was Shannon, the 66. Yeah. 1966 World Cup. all over again. Yeah. The Jeff Jeff Hurst. <laughs> was it over the line? It certainly was. Fantastic. Well done, Kadri, uh, getting the top goal of week 11. Right. Just very quickly. Uh, hey, all the best to my kid. It could be 11 points, by the way. Just tell him. <laughs> Chris, don't be like he's a bit nervous. So Manchester don't Derby, you, Manchester yeah, City, <laughs> Manchester United. Look at them. Saw that live on television. It doesn't even mean that. Oh, the it doesn't even mean it. So phony. No feelings, just very yeah. quickly, a word at the halfway stage. Just your thoughts on looking ahead to the, the next round. No, wonderful, yes. Who can stop De Hale? Got to say that. And it comes down to those key games when they meet Al Sad, Al yeah. Ryan. They've got to beat them. They have to try. Someone's got to beat De Hale, but fantastic. Chris? Great to see the bottom um, part of the league, very competitive. Uh, last couple of seasons, we've seen that in the QB Stars League, so everything to do for our mark here, but they've got a great chance of staying in the league. That's it then. The QB Stars League takes a break until January now. So from Nick Summerby, Chris Makin, myself, and the whole team here at Alcas English. Bye for now.